Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo 992 and today we are back with another brand new video. Today's video we are here as always to break down, react and discuss to the latest Rangers game. A Rangers game that yes, wasn't a win in the traditional sense, but if you saw that game with football and you saw that chance they had in the 94th minute with the last heater of the ball, the fact that we come away from the Czech Republic in the Europa League last 16 with a 1-1 and a vital Away go, that for me, is a no bad wee result. And I'll just be honest with you, that's my initial raw reaction to the game of football. It is one of pretty damn positive when I go back and I think of this game because you look at it from a Rangers perspective, were we at our best? Were we flowing like the way we know we can tow a laundry flow? Did we pass it and move it like the way we know we can? Not and not, but it is another timely reminder that this Rangers team doesn't need to always be at its best to get a very good result, especially in Europe, which is so damn impressive, because the only reason we come away here with a 1-1 and a pretty positive result is not only down to just Alan McGregor just being the ridiculous goalkeeper that he actually is, but the fact that this team is a team that battles and fights with each other, because that's all that was, ladies and gentlemen, because we couldn't string three or four passes together, we couldn't move it to the way we know we can but we never gave up we didn't lose our head we continued to work and battle for each other and the fact that we were, we were able to go to war with them the other day when things were gone wrong is the exact reason why we're sitting here right now with the advantage to Rangers because it goes back to Ibrox and they need to come after us now and that drastically changes the game. And before we go any further on and speak about the actual game recap and break down Alan McGregor because we have to do that surely given what that man did in this game. I want to spend a wee couple of seconds just speaking about today's opposition because it's all fair and good for me to sit here and say that, oh, we weren't quite at our best and we weren't at our sharpest and we didn't move it to the way we can because today's opposition played a major part in why we couldn't settle and why we didn't get time on the ball. And that's something we touched on in yesterday's preview video. If you saw it, that I'll continue to say that this team isn't a team that should be celebrated the fact that we got them or it wasn't us winning the draw when we got Slavia Prague. This is a very, very good footballing team. And now that me and Lee have actually saw them versus Rangers, I think we can agree on that. And the only thing I do want to say about that is though, they played fantastic and they threw everything at us. But still, somehow, some way, this resilient Rangers side just refused to be beaten. And again, that's something to take great pride in, ladies and gentlemen, that we've got a team that can go ahead and do that. And I think pride for me is the perfect word to summarise that game and summarise my feelings. And again, I don't know how you're feeling after the 1-1, get involved in the comment section below, but for me, I see this as a very positive result and it's all to play for at home. And again, we hold the advantage. But transitioning into the game recap, I think when you look at the starting 11 going into this game, it's probably the strongest team that we could have put out at this point, given who's available, and the way we started the game, I would love to say it was positive and it was bright, but it was the exact opposite of that, ladies and gentlemen, as we started the game looking like we were half cut. I don't know how else to summarise it. We just could not pass the ball each other. It was like we were seeing three every guys and we weren't trying to pass to the one in the middle. Rookie error, boys, rookie error. But again, it was a bit of a sloppy start and Slavia Prague certainly didn't, uh, didn't make that easy for us as they just kept coming after us and coming after us. And when they did get the ball, they showed their quality in it. And it was ironically something we spoke about a hell of a lot in the preview. What their bread and butter is, the long balls from the middle of the park or the side of the park's out to the other side. It is going to be the wing play. We talked about whoever wins the wing battle in this game is going to go ahead and win the game. And I think if you look at the first 45 minutes, it was definitely Slavia Prague. In the sixth minute, they had a beautiful long diagonal down to the left-hand side. And Parson, to be fair, stands the boy up. But Hadji can't get back in time to track his runner. And the runner stands there with a bit of magic. It was Romanian versus Romanian here. And their Rom Romanian superstar, sorry, takes one touch inside and buries it right into the top bin. And it's one of those goals very similar to what I sat here and said last year versus Braga. There's genuinely nothing you can do about that. That is just individual quality and individual magic. It's a top bin, and that's what's going to happen at this level. So, I mean, I was already pretty flat given how we were playing at the start of the game, but I still had confidence in the team. But that confidence was nearly in tatters just four minutes later because, once again, another beautiful ball out to the wing, funnels in to the inside. It's some really good, smart um, attacking play for them, and they eventually break into the box, but thankfully, Connor Golton reads it perfectly 
and he times his slide challenge slash block to stop the guy if you're having a free shot and goal because that could have been really, really bad. But CB number one is there again when we need him. Now, I would love to sit here and say the opening 10 minutes of the game and the scares that we had really sparked us into life. But again, we couldn't quite get on the ball just yet. In fact, we have to go all the way to the 29th minute of this game for the next opportunity. And it wasn't yet for us. It's a dangerous free kick from them out on the right-hand side. And it's very well saved from Alan McGregor as the guy tries to be clever and tries to catch him out. But he can't catch out old Shagaroo. He's always alert and always ready for Rangers. So it's a clever save there. And I think that save just started to get the players playing a little bit. And it was almost like the players went, you know what? Things aren't happening. The triangles, the passes that we're trying to do isn't it coming off so let's just throw our bodies on the line and let's just start putting pressure on them and you could quite clearly see a no noticeable difference in us shifting further up the park and getting in their faces and that shift ended up almost being a equaliser for us because the, us putting pressure on them forces them to go backwards so they kind of just keep going out to the wing and the back pass is actually pretty slack and it almost falls to Alfredo Morelos but the goalkeeper gets pretty lucky here as he comes in and kind of slide challenges the ball and ends up hitting off Morelos but end up clearing away instead of going in to the back of net. Maybe that goal where it hit off Morelos a couple of weeks ago in the SPFL was the, the bit of luck in terms of hitting off him going in of the season. He didn't get this one. In fact, it nearly went the opposite way from us nearly taking it to 1-1 from the exact same bit of play. They go all the way back down to the left-hand side, cutting in from Mr. Stonshu, as I was calling him throughout the entire game, well, apart from when he was scoring against us, of course. But this moment right here, again, he shows his quality. Just cutting inside, and nearly a carbon copy of the opening goal, but this time the ball just goes, thankfully, a whisker wide, and I'm sitting back going, we need somebody on him the entire freaking game. And I'll just be honest with you, I hope we never see that guy again until he's standing at Ibrox with the Ranger scarf above his head. What a player he was, and he was a nuisance and a massive threat all afternoon, but we talked about us just getting aggressive and willing to battle. That was Leicester's problem in the previous round. They had all the technical players, they had all the flair and they had the firepower, but they weren't able to go shoulder to shoulder and just battle. But we started to battle in this game and that's ended up how we go back into the lead. And it's us winning the ball back. We hit a ball to Alfredo and Alfredo's just so damn clever. And this is what I love about this laddie. When your back's against the wall, when you need your centre forward, Morelos when he's at it, is as good as anyone. He does brilliant here to win us a free kick about 40 yards out. It's too far to shoot, but it does give Barisic an opportunity to put the ball in the box. And thankfully, he took over the free kicks and the set pieces from Stephen Davis in this game. And the ball right here is absolutely gl glorious. Sorry, right into the danger area. Now, yes, it does take a wee bit of a lucky flick of Connor Golton's knee. But what I love here is your boy Hadji, because he doesn't give up on it, he anticipates that the ball's going to come back, it's got no right to come all the way back to the front post, but he just gambles, and maybe that's his intelligence, the old football and IQ, because this guy is so damn clever, what he does here is genius, because even if you get into that position, most people would probably just try and rattle a shot, maybe grab a corner kick, that could be seen as a success, but this laddie says no to that, and he does so well just to put it back into the danger area, he doesn't try and shoot from himself, and he puts it on a plate for Big Phil Hollander to tap in to the back of the net, and what I love about Hollander here is he just, he scores, right, he doesn't know how to celebrate, because it's almost like his defending programming that's in that cyborg brain of his, it's like, I'm supposed to stop goals, no score them, he genuinely didn't know how to celebrate, it was a brilliant wee moment there, maybe he was checking for the offside flag, but there was no offside flag coming, and again, that all goes down to the intelligence and the anticipation from Hadji, and again, Halanda for sticking in there and getting into the right place, a double back post loyal, as we call it here on the channel, and that got us back to 1-1, did we deserve it that time? Absolutely not, but again, that's the resilience and the heart of this Rangers team. And something else we spoke about in yesterday's preview video is this is a different side when they can see the goal and things aren't always going their way because I think that goal just kind of stunned them a little bit because they deservedly could have been a couple ahead with the amount of good play they were doing, but it was level and that kind of stickiness kind of led us throughout the next 10 minutes because there wasn't another massive chance and that takes us into half time and I'll tell you son, right now, you watching today's video, I bet you had the exact same reaction as me. The second that whistle went, we all leaned back, we went like this and went, 
I'll take that. Another fault we could have shared, by the way, at half time was sitting back thinking, have they got more than one player called Ba? Because if no, that boy is having the game of his life and he's playing eight positions at once. What a phenomenal performance for their right back all afternoon as well. I thought he was brilliant all damn day. And we go into the second half, and listen, I'm not sitting here saying that we were terrible and we were shocking. No at all. I'm not saying it was a bad performance for Rangers. I'm just saying we weren't quite out our best, but the longer the game went on, I think the more we grew into the game, and I think you could see that in the second half, because we go to the 61st minute for the next opportunity for Rangers, and it comes after a couple minutes of them kind of rattling shots just over the bar, or wildly over the bar, I think they started to lose a wee bit of focus in the game, because we started to play at our level, and I think Joe Rebo was vital in this as well, and the guy who was standing just ahead of him as well, Alfredo Morelos, Lincoln, and controlling everything, he was the out ball afternoon, he won the free kick for us, that ended up getting the goal, and he done that for the majority of the second half, and if you look at the, second, the 60 second minute of this game, it's him beating the defender to the ball, his beautiful first time ball, out to Joe Aribo, he then runs and makes a selfless run, down the right hand side that's well found by Nathan Patterson, but then Morelos, his first instinct isn't he new to maybe try and run at the box and make something happen himself and have a wild crazy shot that we've seen a couple of years ago. He's got a wee bit more to his game now and he picks out Joe Aribo out here who's in a much better position at the edge of the box and Joe Aribo does that shimmy to his left foot and I think all of us are seeing that bread basket about to be tickled by Joe Aribo's ball. That doesn't sound right. <laughs> Jory was short, I meant to say there, but it ends up going just wide. But again, Morelos was vital in everything we were doing positive. And I think from the 60th minute onward, we really started to turn the screw. We started putting dangerous balls in the box and we started asking them questions for this first time. You could see they couldn't handle it. And you could see that we were kind of building and building and you knew a chance was going to come because we started to turn it on and we started to play the way that we can play. And it's no surprise to me that Joe Aribo is heavily involved in this as well. So he does brilliant down the left-hand side. He picks out uh, Ryan Kent just at the edge of the box or just inside the box, if I'm remembering it right. And his volley, does it connect the cleanest way? Absolutely no, but it hits it in at the grunt and it's looping right in the top bin, but somehow, some way, their keeper has a McGregor moment because you couldn't get any mayor in the top bin. Again, it didn't have a lot of power, but the fact that the goalkeeper's on the other side of the goal shuffles and just flicks it with the tip of his fingers to stop it for going in really, really shows what a top save that is to stop us from getting another away goal and going 2-1 up. So you're sitting there going, oh, that was inches away from an absolute scream dream. And 2-1, well, ladies and gentlemen, just three minutes after that, again, more play, more good play from Rangers. He's another free kick one by Alfredo, and this one's whipped in by Barisic, and this one right here is absolutely gorgeous, and it looks like it's going to meet CB number one for a bullet header, but unfortunately, it is just out of his reach. But we knew with all these chances that we were going to have that Slavia wasn't going to go away without a fight and we knew that they were going to continue to put pressure on and this is the battle here I wanted to talk about Young Parson because he was up against a real battle the night and did he win every battle? Am I going to sit here and say he was perfect? No. He did lose his fair share but what I really, really liked about the lad and what I was really impressed with is his work rate and his commitment to just keep on trying and he was still bombing forward just like he was bombing back. He was up against a real tricky opponent the night and again he didn't he win them all, but he continued to get stuck in, and I think his overall performance was perfectly summarised in the 82nd minute of this game. After he misjudges a, a kind of tricky header, it ends up jumping right to the Praga player, who hits it once again out wide, and eventually play the ball in very cleverly. The guy does Stephen Davis, which hurts me to say, but inside the box he just turns him inside out, and then he tries to pick out the Slavia Prague player at the edge of the box for a clear shot on goal, but who meets it perfectly with a perfectly timed challenge slash block, sorry, young Nathan Parson, and that right there is absolutely brown, so we can't forget about that moment either, because that looked like it was a clear shot on goal, but somehow the wee man just gets there, and it's a powerful block, and it ends up going out for a throw-in. Majestic for the young man, and I'm sure that experience that he's got today will be invaluable for this kid's career. But before we go ahead and speak about 
Alan Frickin McGregor, there is one other moment in the game from a defensive point of view that I want to give a wee bit of praise of as well because we spoke about Conor Golton, we gave him praise and rightly so, but right here is brilliant for your man Hollander in the 86th minute after Conor Golton's pass, sorry, isn't straight to Arfield, it's just behind him I think or just in front of him, it's one of them, it's just not quite on the money and they end up springing a counter-attack in the 86th minute of this game, one on one with Hollander who's no fast, he's no this, the FIFA boys greet about, but that lad he shows his defensive experience and that mindset again, because right here is a perfectly timed challenge, one on one, if he mistimes that it's not only a penalty, he's probably off the, off the park as well, but it's beautifully timed, despite everyone screaming they're not demanding a penalty and demanding a check VAR, just look at Hollander's reaction, he's just an out and out defender, he just kind of gets the ball, sees it go out for a corner and he doesn't even look at the referee, he just kind of jogs back in his position because he knows he's done his job and that is to defend. Brilliant from Big Hollander but now it's time to talk about Alan McGregor who I thought had his McGregor moment in the 89th minute where they try to whip a ball in, it ends up, I don't think he's meaning to go for this, but it's almost uh, Brazil versus David Seaman S where the ball's going in behind uh, the goalkeeper and it looks like it's just going to kiss in the inside of the bar or inside of the post, whatever you want to call it. But McGregor gets there and flicks it out for the corner. That save for me was impressive enough for Big Shaggy but what he does next, people... Oh my sweet 55, this is absolutely disgusting, it's a brilliant ball whipped in, power pace, everything you could want, the big centre half meets it five yards out, low and hard, but somehow, some way, Alan McGregor shuffles his feet and just gets his big shagger paw doing there with his left hand, I still can't do the save any justice, but he gets his paw doing there, not only does he make an impossible reaction save, he doesn't he palm it out, he ends up palming it into his arms and cradles it. That right there is a joke, people. If you haven't seen what I'm talking about, please go and check the safe. It's absolutely unbelievable. That man right there, Alan frickin' McGregor, could have saved Neil Lennon's job. He could save a PDF on a floppy disk. He could have saved Leonardo DiCaprio at the end of Titanic. He could do anything, the laddie. And it hurts me to think about just how great this man is. It's just unbelievable to look at him and see the consistency that he's go. And for anyone who dares to say this did he's near him or this did he's near him, it's an absolute embarrassment because that there is not only a scrapbook McGregor moment, I think he needs to move a couple from the first two pages because that is up there for me in some of his best ever saves. It's not quite the 2008 save versus Vendor Bremen, but again, it's up there for me and that just shows you his age, that consistency, that save. My God, the last touch of the football is Alan McGregor's left paw stopping us from getting beaten this game. Two freaking one. I bow down to you, Alan. I've got nothing else to say, mate. I absolutely love you to death. Thank you once again for the McGregor moments. And that unbelievable save that's just putting smiles on my face is the last thing we're going to speak about in this game recap. It was Alan McGregor at his absolute best and again, it assures that 1-1 one, one and that vital away goal to make it advantage Rangers going into the last leg of the last 16 but for the possibility, a real possibility now of going to the last eight of the Europa League. We're still unbeaten by the way, that to me is absolutely incredible. And that's why I sat there at the start of today's video and said, it's pride for me. Because again, it didn't all come off. We won at our best, but the fact we were able to roll our sleeves up, battle, and grow into the game, and have our moments, just sums up this Rangers team for me. And honestly, I couldn't be prouder. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. If you're talking about Manny the Matches, it's a real struggle for me not to pick Alan McGregor. I thought the two centre-halves were brilliant. As I've said, I thought um, Morelos was a great in the game and but I'm gonna have to give it to Alan McGregor I mean of course I have to with that incredible save but what about you guys let me know what your thoughts and opinions are not only to the old man of the match discussion but to that game right there in the first leg of the last 16 of the Europa League and with that being said ladies and gentlemen boys and girls I am officially done and dusty thank you so much for taking time out your night to sit here and talk about Rangers things with me I'll see you in the next video all the best and bye bye